Here we go with round four of the Displains Illinois Battle Road. I am Puka, and with me we have two undefeated players so far. They're both 3-0. Someone's going to be 4-0 after this one. We'll see who it ends up being. On the right we have Steven Matz, a local player in the Chicago area. Shows up to all these tournaments. Um, I believe he's a relatively newer master players, or Masters player. He... He was in Masters last year. I'm not sure how long he's he's been in the division, though. So he seems a little newer. And then on the left, we have a longtime veteran of the game, Matt Elvis, a.k.a. Inchy5000, if you've been playing for that long. It's been a while since he's used that screen name, but a.k.a. Chai, please. However you want to call it, it's just Matt Elvis, who is 3-0. So is Steven. And we'll see who comes out on top here in this Darkrai Hydragon mirror match. So Matt, he did mulligan off the first hand. So Steven will get an extra card. It's going to be pretty big. And looks like we're getting started here as they shake hands. Looks like Matt is going first, which is a really, really, really big advantage. Obviously, you always want to be going first. And in a mirror match, it's even more important. So you got to wonder... What exactly goes on in a mirror match like this? Um, how does one go about winning against the exact same deck? And I, I think there's no simple answer to it. But obviously the one way to win would be just to set up first. Start Night Spearing first. And go from there. That's the obvious thing. A lot of it comes down to a high Dragon battle. Uh, if you can only get one in play and your opponent can catch your ears out, it is weak to dragon, and then they, they just dragon blast. Take yours out of play and take away your energy manipulation, then that player is probably going to win. Because they can move energy around in max potion, and you can't. But Matt is getting a really, really strong start here, actually. He gets a turn one, uh, ultra ball, dark patches onto his dark rye, but it looks like he does not draw an energy off of his... Um, Juniper, so that's going to make it so he cannot use Junk Hunt this turn. That's a really, really big deal. That is going to slow him down a turn, probably. And his hand also doesn't look like that that, that great. He's got an Ultra Ball, um, two Dark Patches, a Max Potion, and Matt is going to tap the table and pass, so it'll be up to Steven to get something going here. Uh, he's going to attach to his Sableye, go ahead and catch her out of Dino, and it looks like, yeah, he's just playing out cards. So he can Bianca. I might have even considered playing two catchers there to draw an extra card just because you could junk hunt for that back. But it looks like he's going to confuse Ray and put 10 damage on that dino. I don't know how relevant that will be. Usually the 10 damage on that won't add up to anything significant unless I'm missing something. But who knows. I've been wrong before. Probably be wrong again, but we'll see. I probably would have just preferred getting a catcher back though. So here Matt is going to discard Dark Patch and it looks like Max Potion as well. Uh, now, I think he'll probably go for these wireless here, get the stage 1 in play, and then he'll go from there unless it's prized <laughs> and Matt is shaking his head like, yeah, it's prized. Uh, now this is something he should have checked for earlier, but it happens sometimes. You just kind of forget in the midst of all your tournament games. They all kind of blend together, and you're like, eh, was it prized? Was it not? I don't think it was this time. Let's just hope I, I don't look dumb in front of the camera. And, uh, well, it's all right, Matt. Everyone makes this mistake every once in a while. And it looks like his wireless is, is prized, so it's going to slow him down a little bit here. Now, now, if it wasn't prized, he could pull off a turn three high dragon and get a night spear pretty much for sure. But now he's just going to have to probably attach to the active retreat and Juniper away his hand, something like that. He's going to bench his Mewtwo. I don't know if Matt plays Super Rod, so he just probably wants to put it down and be like, all right, I just want to make sure I have this because this is going to be a big card in this matchup. And it is. Uh, X-Balling at the end of the game is very, very big, so he just wants to make sure he has that in play. It looks like there's no rare candy in that hand. So this is what's going to make things difficult for Matt. He needs to draw Rare Candy High Dragon in order to ever get a stage 2 into play. If he doesn't have the Rare Candy, 
He can never get his energy manipulation going. He can't use Dark Trance. And he's probably going to lose. That's just the way things go in this matchup. You need to get that into play. Otherwise, you are just an inferior version of your opponent's deck. That's all there is to it. So Matt, he's got a handful of trainers. A whole lot of nothing. And he's going to have to pass once again. Uh, that had the potential for being a big turn for him, but it looks like now uh, it's really not going to work out very well. So now Steven, I'm not sure what he's going to do here. He's going to catch her out the other dino. <laughs> and he's just trying to buy some time here. He does not have any supporters or anything like that. So he's probably just going to junk hunt for two catchers, try to buy some time. And yeah, that's really all he can do. I know Matt rips the rare candy. That is such a big card to top deck. Wow. He's going to be able to get the high dragon out this turn. And then he'll probably just be able to night spear. And we can see him win in as quickly as like three turns or something like that. This is what can happen when one player sets up and the other doesn't. And he slams the high dragon on the table. Well, not really. Just kind of casually tosses it out there. And once your opponent searches for that, you know, ah, he's got a rare candy. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, we're, he's got a Juniper as well. He's probably going to catch her out the Dino. Get a Night Spear going. Juniper, all he needs is an energy at this point. Of course, he could miss the energy. That would be very, very bad. But if he doesn't, he'll just get a knockout this turn. And it looks like, oh no, he actually missed the energy. Wow, that's two Junipers in a row where Matt just didn't draw an energy, I think. And that is, ugh, that's devastating. <laughs> uh, it's just annoying to be like, Alright, I got this game, it's in the bag, just got a Juniper, just got to draw one energy out of seven cards. I've already seen a lot of cards in my deck, I know there's a ton of energy in there. This is over, man, I'm just going to Night Spear my way to victory and just going to coast. Move to 4 and 0 my glorious day will continue, and then you draw your seven cards and you're like, what? But, why, why, why weren't those energy? <laughs> uh, why didn't I draw one? <laughs> That's not fair. And now he's just going to X-Ball for 20, because the Dino does have uh, resistance. I'm not sure if I like that play very much from Matt. I think it would have been better served uh, doing just Junk Hunt that turn. And getting back, you know, a catcher or pretty much anything. Max Potion. He's got like two Max Potions in his, his discard pile. So I probably would have preferred a Junk Hunt that turn. And now I don't know what his plan is. Uh, he's got, looks like he's got three N in his hand and he doesn't want to give Steven that new hand. Like, why would you? And now, ugh, where does Matt go from here? Now this might be one of those cases where you're like, all right, I don't want to give him a new hand, but if I just get an energy this turn, I'm going to get a Night Spear. I'm going to take out his Dino. I'm going to be at such an advantage that I actually don't care about giving him a new hand because I'm going to be in the lead no matter what. So there's two routes he can take here. Number one is just catch out the dino and N. Number two is just retreat, junk hunt for like max potions uh, and go from there. Just kind of hope he top decks an energy at some point. So he's going to take a look see how much stuff have I actually used and he's used a lot. He's used a lot of dark patches. He's used a lot of catchers, uh, max potions. So these are all the important resources that you want in your deck for later on. That he just doesn't have available. And he needs to get those back, I think, at some point. So why not just do it now? Why not just use this turn to go ahead and junk hunt? When you know Steven is really weak, his hand doesn't have much, he has no setup. And even if he does get a setup, you're still probably fine. Because you have all that stuff sitting in your hand. Um, and you'll probably just win the game. So I like this decision from Matt. He's just going to Junk Hunt or looks like a random receiver. I don't think he'll need that. He's got three ends in his hand and he doesn't want a Juniper, which he's already played three of anyway. The other card he can get is Bianca. And it looks like he goes for an Ultra Ball and a random receiver. I definitely would have preferred to see him get like Max Potions, Catchers, Dark Patches, anything besides those two cards because I don't think he'll need Ultra Ball. I don't think he'll need random receiver. Um, I can see the logic on the Ultra Ball. Just get a second high dragon in play. 
and you'll probably win just by having two of those out. But now Steven has top deck the end. This is huge. It's going to give him a chance to get into this game. He was just sitting there waiting for a supporter, and he finally got one. So now he'll be able to draw six new cards and maybe get something going. If he gets a rare candy high dragon, he can Night Spear this turn. He can just move all the energy to his Darkrai and take the first prize. Even though Matt seemed like he was the one in the lead, now he could just fall behind if, if Steven draws the right cards here. All it takes is rare candy high dragon, and all of a sudden the pressure is on Matt to do something. But it looks like um, Steven didn't draw much. He does get a Verizian and uh, Dark Energy, so he's just going to retreat and double draw, it looks like, for two cards, because he didn't get another supporter. And, you know, Verizian can be helpful in these kind of situations, so there we go. Now, Matt, he does get his Rare Candy, High Dragon, and it looks like he's finally going to be able to Night Spear. Um, he's going to play another N, just try to get some more cards. The problem with Matt's situation is that he burned a lot of resources already. Like I was saying, there's Max Potions, Dark Patches, Catchers, all in his discard pile, and he might just not have those as the game progresses. And Steven will, because he didn't have to waste those early on. Even though his start was so slow, his advantage now is that all of his resources are still left in the deck. So that's why last turn I would have rather seen Matt go for um, some better cards with the Junk Hunt, not the Ultra Ball and the Random Receiver. He did play the N, he got six new cards. He gets another Catcher. He could play that to knock out a Dino this turn. He's going to take the one with the Energy, that's a good play. The Blend Energy is important in this matchup. Just going to free retreat to his Darkrai, and we should see pretty good game from here on out, assuming Steven actually gets stuff. Uh, Matt, he has another Eevee Light, he's contemplating, ugh, do I play the other one down? If Steven is a, a tool scrapper, then I lose both Eevee Lights, so I don't want that to happen. And Matt will take the first prize after all, and now it'll be up to Steven to respond. Number one is he's going to have to try to evolve his Dino. If he doesn't, it'll get knocked out by a Night Spear, 30 damage, or he could play a Max Potion if he has that. Looks like he does, so he's just going to go ahead with the Max Potion on the Dino. And wow, another terrible hand, he's just going to double draw. This is a really, really rough start for Steven. I, I can't imagine a much worse start. I mean, he is behind, um, and he's not out of it by any means, but he's definitely behind at this point. And I think he's behind to the point where Matt could just go, you know what, I'm just going to retreat, junk hunt for two items, and use my free turn that you gave me, because you're not putting any pressure on me. I have the prize lead, uh, I'll have my resources back, so I'll be at a complete advantage. Um, he can do that, or he could just Night Spear the active, hit a bunch of Dino for 30, and go from there. And it looks like he's just going to go with, I'm going to put the pressure on you still, Night Spear, and force you to draw some stuff. Otherwise, I'm just going to blow you out of the water with some big Night Spears. And there's nothing you can really do about it. Uh, somehow, Steven still has not seemed to draw anything. Um, he puts down a fourth Dino, and he's going for the Deep Growl, it looks like. Oh boy, we don't see this very often. And he actually paralyzes Matt's Darkrai. Wow. That's just the kind of game this is. Um, you know, Matt's fully set up. He's got two High Dragons out. Uh, he's trying to retreat, but uh, I think Matt's realizing, oh, I'm paralyzed. Okay. Uh, it's not one of those I can't attack this turn. Um, nope, you're paralyzed. <laughs> so he cannot retreat, cannot attack. Pretty much is going to have to pass the turn. And let Steven get another turn to set up. Now he's going to put down another Dark Energy, even though he already played one, but Steven points that out. And, yeah, Matt's probably just a little flustered at this point. He's like, really? The Dino's slowing me down? That's what's standing in my way? I could take a two-prize turn here, and you paralyze me with a Dino? But, yeah, that's what happened. So he decides to put down the second Eevee Light. Looks like he doesn't care about the Tool Scrapper anymore. And, uh-oh, looks like Steven got the High Dragon. Does he have a Rare Candy as well? 
Uh, he puts down a blend, but no, he does not have a rare candy. And he gets another heads on the deep growl. And that somehow a dino growling at a Darkrai freezes it in place and paralyzes it. The almighty Darkrai just gets paralyzed by a little dino growling at it. Must be a very deep growl. There we go, though. Uh, Steven gets a rare candy, high dragon, and all of a sudden this is turning into a game. And Matt's got to be feeling like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I had this game on lock. There's nothing that you could do. You had nothing. I was just going to night spear you, knock out everything, and now you've paralyzed me a couple turns. You drew into the rare candy and the high dragon, and ugh. This is going to turn into a competitive game now. This is uh, kind of annoying when you're playing. When you feel like, alright, the only way I'm going to lose at this point is if my opponent gets pretty lucky. Maybe uh, draws into pretty much everything they need, or hits some paralysis flips. And that's exactly what happened here. So what is Steven going to do? Now that he's gotten his high dragon out, uh, he's probably going to Night Spear. He's got a catcher in his hand. Uh, we'll see what he goes for. He's actually going for Sableye. This is an interesting choice considering he could have just hit the active for 70. Uh, and uh, knocking out the Sableye is not going to be that big of a deal, I don't think. But he is just saying, alright, I'm going to take the cheap prize. And we'll go from there. Why not? So he will tie the game up with a Night Spear. And put 30 more on that Mewtwo. That's going to make it so that uh, Dragon Blade can knock it out. Which... Is a nice play. You know that Mewtwo is pretty much a sitting duck for a catcher eventually. Matt's going to lose that at some point, I would think. The The good part for Matt is that he's got the two high dry guns out. So if at any point Steven decides to use Dragon Blast, Matt's just going to have the advantage because he can just knock out Steven's high dry gun and the... I mean, it'll probably just win. I don't know how else to put it. Matt also has the advantage because he has Eevee Lights on board. Steven does not. Steven has a small hand. Um, so yeah, I just think... Still, Matt has the advantage. Of course, if Steven ever were to top deck a supporter or something, or if Matt plays an N, <laughs> uh, he could draw into his resources like max potions and all that sorts of stuff. But until that happens, definite advantage to Matt Alvis. Um... I don't see any other way about it. So the the Eevee lights are a big deal because Matt's going to be able to Night Spear for 90. Probably knock out the Verizian. And then if Steven doesn't have a Max Potion, he can just hit it for 90 again and go from there. Now if I'm mad here, I'm probably looking at the board going, Alright, I could take a, a prize off the Verizian with a Night Spear, but do I actually want to do that? The problem with Steven's board is that his bench is kind of clogged with stuff that's not good. Uh, of course, he has the High Dragon. He's got two Dinos out there and a Sableye and a Verizian. So he can't do the trick where he just kind of retreats to another Darkrai and moves energy to it. He's only got one real attacker out here, and that is Darkrai. You know, he could attack with High Dragon, but then, um, like, what? Why? <laughs> um, he's going to lose it. He's going to lose a bunch of energy. And, yeah. All there's to it. And Matt actually recognizes this. He says, Alright, I'm gonna go after your high dragon. I think that's the better play. Because A, I'm gonna be able to keep your bench the way it is, which is not good. Um B, if you bring up High Dragon, I can actually just Night Spirit for a knockout now. Uh and C, if you have a max potion, I'm gonna force you to use it. I'm gonna make uh sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna force you to make a decision on where to use it. If you use it on the High Dragon, okay. Now I get to knock out your Darkrai. If you use it on the Darkrai, now I get to knock out your High Dragon. So it kind of puts them in a situation where, oh, I need uh, two Max Potions. And you're probably not going to draw two Max Potions, considering Steven has played one already. And there's also the Verizian sitting there that's going to be a prize at any point in the game. So definite advantage to Matt at this point, and he's got... A ton of damage on Steven's board. He's got Eevee Lights in play. He's got two High Dragons. He's got three Dark Rise. His field looks better. And overall, just everything is going well. Now, that's not to say Steven can't win this game. It's still a very close game. Anything can happen. 
But right here you can see, oop, he draws an Eevee Light, but no Max Potion. He can put the Eevee Light on the active. The problem with that is just he can get knocked out by a Dragon Blast. He can get knocked out by an X-Ball. All sorts of stuff can just kind of knock him out at this point. Even if he puts down the Eevee Light, it could be a Tool Scrapper. I don't know if Matt plays that, but that's also an option. So he's probably going to have to play it on his active, and he does. But I don't know how much it'll do. It'll prevent the three prize turn where Matt can just Night Spear and knock out the Verizian. It will do that much. But beyond that, I don't see what it's going to do. But he's actually going to retreat to Sableye, realizing that, uh-oh, I am in a very bad position. I need to actually just use this turn to Junk Hunt and get probably Max Potion and maybe a Rare Candy? I don't know. Um, definitely a Max Potion, though. That's number one card he needs to get back. Maybe a Catcher as well, but he's going to go Max Potion, Rare Candy. He realizes, okay, he could Catcher out my High Dragon. And then I'll lose it, and I'll probably lose the game. So what is Matt going to do? He's going to count his deck to see how many cards do I even have left. Because he has a Juniper and a Bianca. And, you know, he doesn't want to just lose by decking himself out. That is an embarrassing way to lose when you don't keep track of how many cards are left in your deck. So he needs to make sure he draws a good number of cards, but not too many. To the point where he actually loses the game. <laughs> This turn, at the very least, he'll be able to Night Spear, the Sableye, and probably just take out the Verizian as well. Just take a two prize turn here. And then, uh, I mean, Steven's in a tough spot. No matter what he does, he's just in a very, very tough spot. At some point, Matt is just going to come up and be like, alright, I am down to two prizes. This is probably going to happen at some point. He'll be down to two prizes and just move all of his energy to Mewtwo. And X-Ball for the game. There's no way to prevent that against the High Dragon deck. It's really powerful. Uh, it's kind of like what we saw in the previous format with Shaman. Where at some point, if all the energy was sitting out there, you knew a Mewtwo was going to come down and all the energy was going to get just shifted over to it. And it was going to be game. It's just going to X-Ball for like 4,000 damage. And there's not much you can do about it. Uh, looks like Matt is playing an Ultra Ball here. He's discarding, uh, well, taking it back. <laughs> he's going to discard a Rare Candy and a Juniper. It looks like he's saying, all right, uh, I don't have enough cards left to even use this Juniper at this point. So I don't even want to. Um, it looks like that was one of his last supporters, though. He's got a Bianca in hand and the the Juniper he just discarded. So that's going to be scary if Steven ever plays another N later on in the game. Matt will be drawn 5 here from the Bianca. Looks like he wants to keep the Sableye just in case. Um, later, you know, he needs to um, get back two catchers or something like that. Steven is going to count Matt's deck. Looks like there's about 6 cards left. So Matt will have plenty of time to win the game, of course. He does have a catcher in hand. I would probably just save it, though. So he could, um, well, he could he could go either way with this. He could catch her out that Darkrai. Uh, this was actually a big mistake by Steven. He left three energy sitting on that Darkrai for no real reason. Uh, he should probably just spread some energy around. Uh, you should move at least one energy off. Like, we move on to a Dino, move on to a High Dragon, maybe move on to Verizian. Just in case of catcher, Matt could catch her out the Darkrai. Uh, but he's actually going to go for the High Dragon. I don't mind that play either. He's going to take that out and the Verizian, I would think. And it's going to put a lot of pressure on Steven because Matt knows he took the Rare Candy. He's probably got an Ultra Ball to go with it. But now it's just going to make it so if Steven ever decides to attack with High Dragon, um, he's not going to be able to get two into play because his one got knocked out. It's way too tough to get a bunch of Stage 2s out. Getting out two High Dragons, that's reasonable. Getting out three in a game, not so reasonable. And he's going to Ultra Ball here. Get another one out. It's going to be very helpful. Probably Rare Candy, the... Well, it doesn't actually matter which one he Rare Candy. It's probably the, the dark one, actually. To leave himself with a uh, deep growl option <laughs> later on. 
But he discards a Darkrai and a basic Dark. So he has a Dark Patch in hand. He has a Max Potion and a Supporter as well. I'm not sure which one. Might be a Juniper. And yep, there we go. Rare Candy to Hide Dragon. He's going to Dark Trance all the energy away from the Darkrai and Max Potion, healing it all off. He's going to move three back over. And another Dark Patch here. It's got to go on Darkrai and a Juniper for seven. So a great hand there from Steven, but will it be enough? He's down two prizes. Matt still has the advantage, I would think. Look, just look. His board list looks more intimidating. He's got much scarier Pokemon. Uh, every single one of his Pokemon are very intimidating. The Mewtwo... Not as intimidating as the Dark Rise, but you know, he's still there. He's got a, a giant X ball forming. So, still pretty scary. Whereas, you look at Steven's board, he's got a Sableye, he's got a Dino. Eh, not that scary. Uh, so, the scary factor goes to Matt. The, the board advantage goes to Matt. But, um, Steven still has a very good chance of winning. That's for sure. Uh, anything can happen at this point, especially if he gets an N. He has a catcher in hand. I think he's realizing, uh, Matt's got a lot of energy in play. I need to go for that Mewtwo. That's exactly what he's doing, but the only way he's going to knock it out is with his Hydragon, which is what he's going for. So he's going to lose his energy manipulator, and that's no good. Uh, I don't like where this is heading for him, but this is kind of what he had to do. He's got to hope that he gets another High Dragon into play, otherwise he's going to be in some trouble. And Matt, he's just saying, alright, uh, I can do that too. You are weak to Dragon. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and knock out your Energy Manipulator, and then what are you going to do? You probably won't have many options left. And he's actually going to end him to three cards. I like that play. Uh, it was just right after Steven played as Juniper. He didn't play too many cards out of his hand, so he probably had some good stuff. And you're going to disrupt him a little bit and take away his high dragon. So this is a situation where N is very useful. But like I said, anything can happen. There's still a lot of stuff left for both players. We don't know if Steven plays Mewtwo. That could come into play. I know he plays Sigilyph. I don't think that will come into play, though. And Matt is just going to move a bunch of energy up to his active... He's still got four back on his Pokemon, so that's really good for him. He's got another N in his hand, too. So he'll be able to disrupt Steven at the very least. And here we're going to have a Dragon Blast. Matt will go down to two prizes. And now it's up to Steven to respond. I mean, obviously, if he doesn't get a high drag out, then it's... What does he do? He can Night Spear. That's about it. <laughs> uh, he gets... Oh, he actually gets a Catcher and a... A Juniper, so that was a really good hand off the end. We'll see if he gets a Rare Candy High Dragon. If he does, he'll be right back in this game. Looks like he gets a Zwilus, though. And, ooh, a Tool Scrapper. So, this is starting to get a little scary for Matt. Um, he doesn't have many Max Potions left, but he does have one in his hand. So that is a plus. But, ooh, he draws a Catcher. <laughs> uh, that Catcher is going to be huge. I don't think he'll use it this turn. He'll probably just use it next turn. Because he'll hit this Darkrai for 70. Hit something else for 30. And then he can catch her for the game next turn, pretty much. So, Matt should just hold on to that catcher. Sure, you can knock out this Wireless, but I don't think that's the right move here. You just kind of accept the fact that he could get High Dragon out again. And you save that catcher for your last two prizes. It's not a big deal. Now he is going to retreat to his new Darkrai with no damage on it. Um, he should probably just max potion that one to take away the option of Steven even having a catcher here. Uh, looks like that's what he's going to do. He should play the max potion, heal off that Darkrai, and just Night Spear here. And, yep, he's going to Max Potion, heal off the Darkrai. Probably just Night Spear for 70, and the next turn he can Dragon Blast for the game. If Steven doesn't have a Max Potion. Even if he does have Max Potion, it's like, well, I can do it. And then, what? 
I lose all my energy. But oh, we get to High Dragon as well. So, still could be very scary for Matt. Steven gets the Max Potion. Gets another Energy and another Juniper. So, this is not over yet, folks. This is still a game. We could see Steven make a nice comeback here. Depending on what he has left in his deck. Um, a Mewtwo would be huge. I don't know if he plays it or not. At this point, I don't think Matt has a response to the Mewtwo. Maybe he does. Um, he does have Shaman EX, I forgot about that. So that is an option. Um, if you're mad, I actually probably would have just put 30 on Darkrai with the Night Spear. The Bench Darkrai, so that um, if Steven somehow were to knock you out this turn, you could just drop your Shaman EX and Revenge Blast for the game. He has an Ultra Ball in hand, so that would certainly be an option for him. But at this point, both players have used up pretty much every resource. There's probably like one catcher left for each player. They're probably both out of max potions at this point. Um, they they just don't have much. Steven super rods a high dragon and a dino and a dark back into his deck, but he just doesn't have anything left. He doesn't have any more resources, and I think eventually Matt will win this game, just based on the fact that Steven doesn't have catchers left. Um, if he does, he doesn't have them in his hand. So here we go. Here's a night spear. And it looks like time has been called as well. So Matt is turn one. Steven will be turn two. And Matt will be turn three. So I still think Matt has the major advantage. That's for sure. As long as Steven does not get a catcher at some point. But who knows? Now for sure if if Matt just... Night Spears and Steven doesn't have uh, an N and a Max Potion. Matt's going to win just by catching the Darkrai and Dragon Blasting it for the game. No question about that one. And also, Steven has one turn to take the lead or tie the game. Because he'll be turn two. Matt is turn one. Um, so Steven has to take a prize next turn or else he loses. That's just the way it is. He's going to lose on time if he doesn't take a prize. So, he needs a Pokemon catcher or else he loses. Um, he has, let's see, he's only got four on the bench. So, if he gets a Mewtwo or something, he could X-Ball, take a prize, or take two prizes, and go from there. But he definitely needs a catcher this turn or else he is done for. Plain and simple. Catcher or Mewtwo, I don't think there's anything else that can knock out this Dark Ride in one hit. He needs to take a prize or else it's over. And Matt's just thinking, alright, what's my best play here? How can I avoid you taking prizes? Is there anything I can do to make this tougher for you? He did the right thing by retreating to his Dark Ride. And he's going to Night Spear, put the pressure on, um, do 70. He could play an N, but I don't think he wants to. Because he wants to keep that Catcher in his hand for sure. Because that's just kind of his win condition. He can just catch her for game next turn if there's no max potion. And here we go. That's just... It's it's a high pressure situation. You know, one mistake and you lose the game. And effectively you lose the tournament because battle roads don't have top cut. So you have to win every round to win the tournament. So we're going to see if Matt makes the right decision here. Um... I mean, there's not really a decision left to make. He's already retreated to this Dark Rye. You do 70. Doesn't really matter where you do the 30. You can probably just do it to Sableye again. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. He can do 10 to the bench Dark Rye. I don't think that makes a difference, though. Um, so yeah, he, he should just Night Spear. No catcher involved. Just, uh, even if Steven does get two prizes next turn, Matt still wins. As long as he doesn't get end. Because he can uh, Ultra Ball for the Shame and EX. And Revenge Blast for the game. I mean, he's got four blends on his field and two high dragons, so... He certainly will be able to Revenge Blast next turn. Uh, I think this is the only decision Matt is making. Do I want to play the Ultra Ball now in case I get end? And the answer to that should be no. Because you want to keep your catcher. His other question is, do I want to play my catcher now so I can just take 
a two prize lead? And I think the answer to that as well is no. Because you just want to hit for 70. And then next turn, even if you get catchered and Steven takes two prizes, you should be able to tie the game at the very least and then win. I really don't see a way for Steven to win at this point because Matt has the catcher. It's going to take a miracle N where Matt does not draw his catcher and does not get... Or, or Matt does not get a catcher, and Steven does. And I don't know if Steven actually has any left. But you can see this is an agonizing decision. Matt is just playing through all the scenarios in his head, thinking, is there any way I can lose this? I don't want to make a mistake. I want to play my catcher. But he really needs to make a move. <laughs> this is a very long turn. Uh, he's just kind of sitting here thinking about it for a while you're definitely allowed to think in these situations but at some point you gotta make a move and it's gotta be a night spear don't play the catcher just night spear um, he's gonna move another energy around um, I don't think that'll make any difference at all literally no difference because well you have a ton of energy in play. <laughs> Matt is just doing more math. Uh, I wish I could find something interesting to say. Hey, there we go. Night Spear. Okay. So, he's going to do 70 to the active, 30 to the save line. And that was probably just an agonizing turn for Steven because he either knows that I lose or I don't draw a catcher and I lose. And even if I do, I still might lose. <laughs> So he's going to Ultra Ball. Uh, I think he's played three catchers at this point. So he's going to Ultra Ball. Take a look at his deck. And I do not see a catcher. So right there you can see that he loses the game. <laughs> yeah, he's got no way to win at this point. And he's just taking a look at it. Soaking in the bad news. Saying, is there anything I can do? I need to take a prize this turn. Otherwise I lose on time. Catcher's prize. I have no other Pokemon to attack with. And there we go, he extends the hand. So Matt Alvis will go 4-0. And, oh. and there you can see the next prize is the catcher. But we know Matt had the game anyway with the Shaman EX. So I don't think that mattered. Um, and yeah, Matt Alvis, 4-0 oh at this Displains Illinois Battle Road. That was a very, very close match. Back and forth. Got a little slow there at the end. But at the end of the day, Matt will win the, the Darkrai High Dragon Mirror match. We'll move on to some more games here from this extremely competitive battle road. Thanks for watching, guys. I am Puka from the Top Cuts, and we'll be back with round five coming up soon.